Good morning, and welcome to St. Paul United Methodist Church of Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. My name is Jessica Sable, and I will be your worship leader this morning. Please join me in our scripture lesson today, which will be read from John 3, 16 through 20. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his son and only son, so that everyone who believe in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. God sent his son into this world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believe in him, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate uh, the light and refuse to go near it, for the fear their sins will be exposed. The word of the people, the, the word of God for the people of God. Good morning. I'm Pastor Maurice Horn. I welcome you and I thank you for joining us in worship this morning. Looking at the scripture that was read today, I would like to use for a subject, how is it possible? In the earlier part of this chapter of St. John, the third chapter, a man by the name of Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader, a Pharisee, he came to speak with Jesus. And he said, Rabbi, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evident that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus didn't understand this, so he asked, how can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The wind bloweth wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it's come from or where it's going. So you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. Nicodemus asks, how are these things possible? All what Jesus was saying to Nicodemus didn't make sense to him. Nicodemus' logical mind couldn't grasp what Jesus was saying to him. He didn't understand it. So Jesus responded by saying several things to Nicodemus. And in his 16th verse, he said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. In other words, Jesus was saying to Nicodemus, you don't need to understand it. All you need is faith in God. In that 16th verse, Jesus did not say that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever understandeth him shall not perish. He did not say whosoever can make logic out of what he said shall not perish. 
He did not say whosoever can figure it out shall not perish. He said whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You have to believe and trust in God. How is this possible? Have you ever perfectly poached your breakfast eggs in 45 seconds in the microwave? Have you ever logged onto your email site and downloaded messages from your friends, business associates, and maybe even your children? Have you ever made a phone call from a cell phone? Have you ever stopped at an ATM machine and withdrew some money from your bank account? All of these things and a hundred other things would have been considered as being impossible only three or four decades ago. We would have said, how is this possible? Today, home electronic gadgetry, microchip technology, medical, surgical, and pharmaceutical wizardry, and a culture with 24-7, 365 services has made much of what used to seem to be impossible in the past, but today it is possible and part of everyday common experiences. Everyone knows someone who still lives in the Flintstone age, and they don't want to try or do anything new. Some people would rather cook in the same old scarred and seared saucer pan that they've been using for years rather than to try the convenience of a microwave. Some people refuse to believe that anything other than snail mail is a legitimate or trustworthy form of communication. In today's gospel, Nicodemus is like one of those folks. Nicodemus was not open to the possibilities of new things, and he couldn't comprehend what Jesus was saying when he said, you must be born again. Nicodemus was confused by the unexpected nature of Jesus' images and the possibilities of his promises that all he kept saying is, how is this possible? How is it possible for us to be born from above after our first physical birthday is long past? How is it possible for us to see and enter into the kingdom of God? How is it possible for sinful men and women to ascend into heaven? How is it possible that mortal creatures such as ourselves may gain eternal life? The answer to that question how is it possible? Is it's possible because we got a God that knows everything and can do anything. We have a God that make things that seem so complicated very simple. We have a God that's able to take nothing and make something out of. We have a God. That that's outlines the core of the reality in his powerful verse that was written here in St. John, third chapter, the 16th verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. 
For God so loved the world, not the neighborhood, not the city, not the state. But God so loved the world, that's everybody, anybody, the good, the bad, and the ugly. God loved everybody so much that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, whosoever, all you have to do is insert your name. Whether it's Mary, Jack, John, Joe, Bill, Sue, it doesn't matter. Whatever your name is, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God has made what was once upon a time impossible he has made it possible. God has made it so that the gap that's been between God and human is closed. It's closed because when Jesus died on the cross, he struck his arms out. And that allowed us to have access to God through Jesus Christ. No matter what you have done, God will forgive you for your sins. All you have to do is believe, just have a little faith. Indeed, Jesus is proof of God's commitment to doing the impossible. Jesus told Nicodemus, he said, you are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things. I assure you, we tell you what we know and what we have seen. And yet, you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? How is this possible? Some people might say, I still don't understand God. Therefore, I can't receive him. But there's many things we don't understand, but yet we not only receive it, but we benefit from it. I don't understand how a black cow can eat green grass and produce white milk and yellow butter. But I'm not going to give up milk and butter because I don't understand it. I'm going to continue being a recipient of that milk and butter and drink it when I can and put the butter on my food when I need to. I don't understand how the television, the radio, and the internet work. But yet, I use them on a regular basis. I don't understand how I can go to Google and ask almost any question and just as soon as I hit the enter button, the answer is right in front of me. It's almost like Google was waiting on me to ask the question. It's almost as if Google knew the question. And as soon as I asked Google, Google gave me an answer. I don't understand it, but I use Google every day. You may not understand God or the things of God. And let me tell you, God is much greater than Google. But if you have a little faith and trust in God, then God will see you through. It is impossible for a limited human mind to understand an unlimited God completely. That's where faith come in. By faith, I receive God's plan for my redemption. I trust in Jesus Christ as my Savior. If you don't believe we have sufficient revelation that answers the question of what God is like, then you will never be satisfied because all discussions outside of the word of God is speculative. Every other ideal about God is the product of the imagination or reasoning of a human being. Your guess is as good 
as anyone else. How is this possible? Do you believe in miracles? I believe in miracles because I have personally experienced them many times. I know from a personal experience that when you meet God's conditions and have a little faith, God performs miracles. And what a mighty God he is. I've had people tell me, well, pastor, I really don't understand how miracles work. Guess what? Neither do I. But you don't have to understand a miracle to receive a miracle. That's why it's called a miracle. It's supernatural from above. God performed it. Sometimes God can perform it without modern medicine, and sometimes God perform it with modern medicine. It doesn't matter how God perform it. We just keep looking for God to perform miracles each and every day. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What God has done in the past, God can still do in the present and in the future. All you need is faith in God. It's not hard to have faith in someone who has never failed. God has been able to do the impossible. God can reach anybody and everybody. I love the song that says, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. Don't let the enemy convince you that you're unworthy of God's blessings in your life. The price for your redemption, for your healing, for your salvation has already been paid in full. Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the entire world, past, present, and future sins. Then he arose from the grave with all power in his hands. He walked this earth for over 40 days, healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead. Then he ascended back into heaven. And one day he's coming back again. Someone might say, how is this possible? It's possible if you have faith in God. It's possible to all who believe. You must have some faith. When you have faith in God, then every now and then you should ask the question, how is this possible? Then I challenge you to have a little talk with Jesus. Whenever that question, how is this possible, come to your mind, then you have a little talk with Jesus. I heard one songwriter, as he sang a song, he says, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. Lord, hear my Faint it, cry, answer, by and by. Feel a little prayer wheel turning. Know a little fire is burning. Just have a little talk with Jesus will make it right. The disciples walk with Jesus. They saw the many miracles that Jesus performed. But yet and still, they had to say, Lord, increase our faith. And we should do the same. Say, Lord, increase our faith. How is it possible? It is possible if you have faith in God, trust in God. All things are possible to those who believe. You may not understand it. You may 
cannot give a rational explanation. All you have to do is just keep leaning on the everlasting arm and trusting in Jesus, and God can work it out while you still trying to figure it out. How is it possible? God bless you. Amen.